The thing about giving a review for Mass Effect 3 is that without even looking, everyone knows that the graphics are great, the sound design is fantastic, and the music phenomenal. The story is still fairly good even while attempting to live up to the first two games and the hype that formed around them. Bioware is unlikely not to impress on any of these levels, and they do. It's also true that the gameplay is similar enough to the second game, with only a fraction more RPG elements mixed in. So then, why bother to give a review? It already sounds like it would give this game the highest rating? I would not, though it's certainly not terrible. With little exception, I will keep this review as close to spoiler-free as I can. I will list in the description at what point the spoilers begin and end, so that those who would like to skip them can. As Commander Shepard this time, you are responsible for allying the entire galaxy of volatile races together in an attempt to stop the Reapers, sentient machines from eons ago that want to harvest all organic life. What's strange about this is I swear Shepard was doing this in the first two games, and that by the third, everyone should have already been in line behind him or her. Mass Effect 3 should have been a 10-hour game, except for the weirdness of no one ever believing Shepard. In fact, they throw her in prison! Note, from here on out I will be calling Shepard by her, as that is how I play the game. This is where my first complaint comes in. If you play through the Arrival expansion for Mass Effect 2, you know that Shepard is in prison because she destroyed the Relay in the Batarian system. If you don't have that backing, however, the player is told nothing as to how the story begins. In a way, it's fair that Bioware did this, because who would be playing the third installment of the game without playing the first two and their DLC? But, not everyone can afford or would bother with the DLC, so even devoted fans might get thrown into the mixture with newcomers. They do give a half-hearted explanation of what happened later on in the game, but I stress that it is barely acceptable and even without the arrival story known by the player, this sorry excuse for a story element does not cut it. Anyway, the Reapers attack and Shepard is sent through a million hoops in order to get all the races of space fighting the baddies, and working on the Crucible. The Crucible is an old device that was being planned for eons that could combat the Reapers, which was conveniently found for the beginning of this game. To be fair again, it was Liara who found the plans for this device, and she did so by being the Shadow Broker. Of course, this again brings up my DLC argument, but I won't repeat my vitriol. As far as the gameplay of these missions is concerned, some are standard and good enough, and others are fantastic, especially those having to do with direct Reaper confrontation. There were times where I felt my heart race, and my absolute favorite moment was when I attempted to heavy melee a mob, they survived, and as they wound up to strike me down, Garrus popped them in the head from a distance with his sniper rifle. This moment would be unique to the third game, because you now get a charged melee attack that helps you feel like a badass. And there's also the ability to reach over cover, throwing an enemy to the ground to stomp their face in. The characters of Mass Effect 3 are all well and good. Unlike some, I don't care that the majority of the squad mates are repeats from the first two games. Mostly the first. In fact, it makes the game better. I want to charge into battle against the world's grandest enemy with Garrus, Liara, and Talia at my side. Not a bunch of fresh faces. They're at the beginning, they're at the end. The interactions with these characters, all of them, are best in this game than any other. As far as humans go, I have never been a fan of Ashley or Kaiden, but James is a welcome addition and far more likable than Jacob. I also want to give incredible props to Bioware for their inclusion of homosexuality normalcy. It was certainly around in the first two games, and in other series, but in this game I began to chat with Cortez, the shuttle pilot, to find that his husband had perished. What was nice about this moment was not only the fact that no one batted an eye as if it were quirky, but that James, the muscular, female-seducing jock, is a close friend of Cortez. It may seem like nothing after the fact, in my review, but I applaud Bioware for understanding that in the future, this is the way in which the world should be. As far as scenery goes, there are some missions that take you to incredible places and have you doing incredible things. I want to be as spoiler-free as much as I can, until a certain point, but there is an Asari monastery that you investigate that had my skin crawling. The refurbished Normandy is great, but I do miss the Cerberus version to some degree. I'll throw in another complaint here as long as I am talking about the Normandy. The load times, oh my god, the load times. Perhaps I am jaded and incorrect, but this game suddenly makes all others, even those like Sy Skyrim, seem to load quickly. Hell. There are doors on this ship that take 5 to 10 seconds to open sometimes. The dial just spins and spins with nothing happening. 
There has never been a better incentive to stay alive because dying will result in a nap-worthy load time. The semi-annoying scanning of Mass Effect 2 and atrocious driving of Mass Effect 1 have been replaced by a search and rescue scanning mechanic. It's actually quite simple, as it should be. All you do is fly around a system throwing out random scans. When resources are found, you more deeply scan a planet and then leave. The trick is that multiple scans call in the Reapers, and they are game over. They will leave so you can scan again, but only when you have another mission under your belt. So you have to be accurate, patient, or play dangerously. Sometimes these Reapers in space would kill me from barely having contact, and other times we were intimately molesting each other and I still got away. Regardless, I much prefer this scanning system over the painful experiences of the previous two games. As far as RPG elements are concerned, the only real difference is that of weight. Carry too much and your character begins to get bogged down. This doesn't affect your mobility, but it does affect your power recharge time and frankly, this is a great idea. You can pack yourself full of weapons and mow everything down, or run light and fire off powers as if you were in a summary. I prefer only having an SMG in my sniper rifle so that I can blast out incinerates repeatedly. At this point I need to use spoilers, so skip to whatever I wrote in the description to avoid this. You see, I have a unique perspective of being a dedicated fan and not having save files from the first two games. Long story short, my live account was hacked, and while I could get the ME1 files to transfer, the ME2 files were guarded by EA and are forever lost. So I abandoned my 360 and got the game for the PS3, since I prefer that system anyway, and it has free online. Well, this led to much disappointment as far as story and characters were concerned. Some people did not even exist, despite evidence of them having been around. The most painful example I can give is that of the Geth vs. Quarian debacle. Without an ME2 file, Legion does not exist and is replaced by something called a Geth AI. This by itself I was getting over, but then at the end of the conflict I had no way in which to preserve both races, recruiting them both. My Paragon meter was damned high, but I thought perhaps that was the problem. Check online, and nope, the problem is that I don't have an ME2 imported game, and therefore the option to save both the Geth and the Corians deliberately does not exist. On this point, screw you, Bioware. Last spoilerific thing, I loved the ending. I understand the complaints against it, that ultimately the choices you made did not have an effect. It would be nice if that many vari variations could occur, but that would be impossible. Oh, you left Comrade alive? Then the ending has changed. The amount of storage required to hold that many possible scenarios would be a hard drive the size of a Reaper. Your choices affect the game as you play it, and Bioware crafted a beautiful and wondrous, wondrous cinema-worthy ending instead. I salute what they have done. In my opinion, the ending of Mass Effect 3, from the point of no return until the credits, is the greatest couple of, couple of hours in all entertainment history. All other sci-fi entities, such as Star Wars, should bow in the glory of Mass Effect and Shepard. That'll be the end of the spoilers and nearly the end of the review. I will also say that it's only because of one trophy, but I am disheartened by the trophies in this game, the same as I was with the last two Assassin's Creed titles. I hate it when a game has trophies that require online play and victory when playing at that. It's only a minor gripe, but if you happen to be like me, then no, you will not be getting the Platinum Trophy. The primary reason I refuse to play online is because every time I've tried has led to a mess of servers or impatient people leaving continuously. All in all, after getting through the game and looking back, I had a hell of a time. Those of you who watch the rest of my vids know that I am a Dark Souls fanatic. Throughout most of my Mass Effect 3 playthrough, I felt an itch to return to Dark Souls, but now that the game is done, I am wanting to dive back in for more Shepard.